Thank you, Professor Chuchumi. Now I will go to the other session about uh, high food. Uh, we have the wonderful speaker, Zhang Cai. Zhang Cai Yes, I will talk in English. Ah, okay, good. Um, I'm going to talk in Chinese. Uh, we have the wonderful speaker, uh, Dr. Zhang Cai. Actually, the Dr. Zhang Cai is a senior high food doctor and also a very wonderful, well experienced tutor and have a lot of the senior, uh, have a lot of the experience. Also, is a membership of the International Society of the Minima Invasive and the Virtual Surgery and also the review of the International Journal of the Hypersthermia. The Dr. Zhang, Dr. Zhang ever provide clinical training of the high food treatment at home and abroad, and ever be South Africa and Jordan and South Korea, and uh, to help to establish the high food center. So he also ever training more than 15 domestic doctors and more than 20 international medical staff, and have the complete about a full southern high food treatment case. So it's well, well experienced, well experienced doctor and the tutor. So let's welcome Dr. Zhang. Okay. So, yeah, um, you will have given us the topic is the high food, followed by DNC to treat the cesarean scar pregnancy, the clinical protocol and the outcome. Please, Dr. Zhang. Okay. So can you see my screen? Mm, yes, now. Okay. So uh, thank you, Dr. Chang. Uh, I'm Zhang Cai from National Engineering Research Center of uh, Ultrasound Medicine. Today, I will talk about high food followed by dilation and the heritage to treat cesarean scar pregnancy and the clinical protocol and outcomes. Um, my talk will include uh, five parts. So first is the background about the cesarean scar pregnancy. It is defined uh, as the gestational sac implants at the scar side of the previous uh, cesarean section on the lower anterior um, uterine wall. We can see that here is a wedge shape and this area suggesting a uh, possible impaired healing. And uh, it is reported that the prevalence of um, cesarean defect uh, in women with cesarean section is up to uh, 84%. And uh, this uh, kind of disease is first de described in 1978. And uh, the incidence is um, rare, but is between one uh, 1800s to 1,2200, and it accounts for 6.1% uh, of ectopic um, pregnancy with a history of at least one cesarean delivery. And in the recent years, the risk and the incidence of the CSP has been increased. We can see from a report from 2010 from the World Health Organization global survey, it showed that in Asia, the cesarean section rate is about 27%, uh, uh, and in China is extremely high, as high as 46%. And uh, here is another report by uh, our Chinese people in 2014, that is four years later, this rate is increased to 55% for the cesarean section. So because the cesarean section rate is increased, so the uh, risk of the cesarean scar pregnancy is also risk. And in the past two decades, uh, I searched the literature. We found that the publication about CSP from, um, from the, uh, in the past two decades is more than 1,100 papers. And uh, we can see it here is uh, uptrend. And also we can see that the most, um, the highest number of publication is in China, followed by the North American and the England. And uh, the types of CSP, 
it has been introduced uh, for the um, first uh, lecturer that is Professor Adelan. And uh, I find uh, here is an international uh, classification. It is divided by two types. The first type is the endogenous type that we can see the gestational sac is totally inside the uterine cavity. And the type two is the exogenic type. So we can see that the gestational sac is grown outside and to the bladder and to the abdominal cavity. So this is the, an international classification. And also, as Professor Adelan said that uh, in China, our Chinese domestic uh, classification also uh, has a little bit different from the international one. So here are three types. The, for, uh, the type one and the type two are the endogenic type, but the difference is that, so for the type one, that the most gestational sac located in the uterine cavity and only partially implanted in the scar. And the thickness of the uterine mild matron um, between the bladder and the gestational sac is more than three millimeters. But the type two is that the most gestational sac implanted in the scar and the thickness of the uterine mild matron between the bladder and the gestational sac is no more than three millimeters. So this is the difference between these two types. And also we have the type three. So the type three is that the gestational sac completely implanted in the mild matron of the uterine scar area. And it grow protrude outward to the bladder or to the abdominal cavity. And also in this consensus, uh, they introduced a, a subtype of the type three, that is the mass type. So in this type, it is usually after the CSP abortion. So if you, we do the ultrasound uh, um, check for the patient, we can see in the, um, in the scar area, here are the mixed uh, ultrasound echo because uh, the, mass has the cystic and the solid tissue inside, which including the residue of the uh, scar pregnancy and the hematoma. So this is a Chinese uh, classification. And what is the risk of uh, CSP? So here uh, I, um, I talk about uh, three risks. The first, uh, the bleeding during the first trimester of pregnancy. And the second, the increased risk of massive bleeding from the side of the implantation. And uh, the third is that the uterine rupture because of the deep implantation and the growth of the gestational sac. And uh, the last two are life threatening. And for the treatment of the CSP, mm, we should know that there is no consensus for the management of the CSB. The aim of the treatment is to first try our best to preserve the patient fertility. And the second is to prevent the life-threatening complications, including the massive hemorrhage and the uterine rupture. So, um, these um, methods are all have been used to treat the cesarean scar pregnancy. The first one is medical therapy, in which the MTX is the most used, uh, including the local usage or the uh, general usage. And also we use the, oh, sorry. And we also use the uterine artery embolization and uh, dilation and uh, carriage. Uh, laparoscopic excision, um, hysteroscopic resection, and hysterectomy. Uh, in the past, uh, more than uh, 10 years ago, I think the um, high intensity focus ultrasound, which is high for, has been introduced to treat the CSP. And so let's talk about the high treatment of the cesarean scar pregnancy. Before we talk about uh, the treatment of CSB, let's review the principle of HIFU. So the HIFU is that the high intensity fo uh, focused ultrasound waves are focused at the focal spot by the transducer and to increase the 
focal spot, the temperature is more than 65 centigrade and the coagulative necrosis is, is induced. And uh, also we need to know that the effect of HIFO is uh, not more than, uh, not only the heating effect, it has uh, three effects, uh, including the heating effect, cavitation effect and mechanical effect. So how have to treat the cystic scar pregnancy? We recommend the combined therapy, which is uh, the HIF plus the ultrasound guided DNC or HIF plus the histo hysteroscopic DNC. So what is the role of HIF in CSP? So the first is to reduce the risk of the massive hemorrhage during the following DNC and uh, to minimize the damage to the um, uterus because it is non-invasive and uh, to keep the integrity of the uterus and maybe can give the chance of quick recovery of the implantation area and to shorten the interval between the scar pregnancy and the following pregnancy. So for the half treatment of for cystic scar pregnancy, we have the inclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria. For the inclusion criteria, uh, the patient should be more than 18 years old. And uh, we recommend the type one CSP, which is endogenic CSP. And the gestational age is no more than 10 weeks. And the size of the gestational sac is no more than five centimeters. And for the exclusion criteria, and uh, there is no active uh, vaginal massive bleeding, and uh, patient should not um, have the risk of a uh, highly risk of the uterine perforation or the rupture. And if the patient have the acute inflammation of the reproductive system, the patient is not suitable for have. We need to control her infection first. And the previous and the previous uh, high dose abdominal radiotherapy uh, radiotherapy is also the exclusion criteria, and for the last one is the technical exclusion. Mm, is that if we have the intestinal adhesion in acoustic pathway, that means when the ultrasound go past the Bowel, there is a high risk of the bowel injury. So we should uh, not do have treatment for this kind of patient. And uh, so what is the health protocol of the C uh, CSP? So first, uh, if the patient uh, have been diagnosed of the cesarean scar pregnancy by the ultrasound or the contrast MRI, so, and also the patient is meet the inclusion criteria I mentioned before, and uh, the patient is, can be prepared to do the health treatment. So pre-treatment, we need to do some preparation, including the diet preparation and uh, bowel preparation. Bowel preparation, we can do the carcasses and also the enema. Enema is not... Uh, um, the standard or the compulsive. And we also need to do the skin pre uh, preparation, including the degas and degrease, and also the catheterization before the HIFO treatment. And then we do the HIFO treatment for this kind of patient. After the treatment, after HIFO, about two to three days, and we can do the um, ultrasound guided or the hysteroscopic. DNC for the patient. And then we need to monitor the patient or need to follow up the patient strictly, especially for the serum beta HCG and the decrease. And we need to maybe to do the uh, serum check um, every week. And we also need to monitor the patient for the vaginal bleeding duration and follow her up for the time uh, of her menstruation return to normal. So this is the high food protocol of the cystic scar pregnancy. And uh, let's talk about the high food treatment. So what is the high food treatment for the uh, CSP? The purpose for high food is that we can ablate the nutrient vessels 
of the gestational sac in the scar area. And then we can lose the tightness between the gestational sac and the implantation myometrium. So our focus should be, so this uh, green or the yellow dot uh, represents the focus. So this focus should put in the implantation area and then we can get the significant hyperechoic scale changes. We can, sh uh, I can show it uh, in the next slide. So um, in this slide, we, uh, I want to show you how to evaluate the half effectiveness. So during the half treatment, we have the real-time ultrasound. So the real-time ultrasound uh, show, can show us that uh, the significant hyperechoic scale change. We can see that this is the before HIFO and after HIFO, the implantation area has uh, totally uh, changed, the scale totally changed. This is the intra-treatment uh, evaluation. And immediately after the HIFO treatment, we can do the contrast enhanced ultrasound after HIFO. And uh, we can see that the implant implantation area, which we ablated, we have the non-perfused area or the low perfused area. So this is the two ways to evaluate the HIFO effectiveness. And uh, for our half doctors, we also want to uh, optimize the half treatment. So what kind of the sonication strategy is better for the treatment for, of CSP? Here is one uh, study conducted by a team. So they, they retrospective uh, analyzed uh, their treated uh, patient and they use two kinds of different sonication strategies and they divide the patient into two groups. The first group is the C-shape sonication and the other is the I-shape. I will show you what is C-shape and what is I-shape. So we can see from this figure that the shape, we can see that the green dot is put around the sac and uh, in the implantation area like a curve. And the eye shape is along, is in the implantation area and along the cerebra like a line. So this is two different sonication strategies. And uh, uh, they first uh, compare the baseline characteristics of the patient. We can see that in these two groups, there is no difference between these two groups for the baseline characteristics. But uh, when we um, compare, compare the half treatment result, we can see that in the eye shape, the sonication time is in significantly decreased and also the total energy for the ablation is decreased. So this is the uh, half treatment parameter. And also we um, analyzed uh, the adverse events. We we can see that in the eye shape, this group, the buttock pain or the lower abdominal pain is also significantly decreased in this group. And when we compare the ultrasound guided DNC, which is followed by the half treatment, we can see that the operation time or the blood loss or any other um, adverse events during uh, this procedure, there's no difference between these two groups. So the authors, when they compared these two kinds of a strategy, they concluded that the eye shape can reduce the sonication time, the energy input, and the rate of buttock pain and lower abdominal pain during the half treatment with no increase of the risk um, during the DNC. So they conclude that the eye shape strategy may be more efficient and safer than the C shape. So this is the half treatment we're trying to do some optimization for the CSP. And next, I will talk about the comparison of HIFU and UAE because we know that the uterine artery uh, embolization is another minimal invasive treatment for the cesarean scar pregnancy. So what is the efficacy and the safety between these two technologies? So I find there is a meta-analysis in 2019. In this paper, the authors, researchers, they analyzed eight papers 
And uh, from their analysis, we can see that when they compare the beta HCG normalization, we can see that the uterine, uh, the UAE, has the shorter time to get the beta HCG to um, return to the normal. And, uh, but uh, for the comparison of the blood loss during the DNC, um, we found that uh, the Hive group has um, the less blood loss during the DNC. And when compare the adverse events, also the Hive group has the lower rate of the adverse events. And uh, for the comparison of the duration of the hospital stay, also the Hive group has the shorter hospital stay than the UAE group. And also they analyzed the comparison of the hospital, hospitalization expense. This is the half group has the lower expense than the UAE group. And uh, at last, uh, they compared the successful rate and there is no difference. So from this meta-analysis, and um, here is the summary of the results of all these uh, parts I mentioned before. And the researchers concluded that um, both HIFO and UAE combined with DNC were safe and effective for the cesarean scar pregnancy. Uh, and the patients in the HIFO group maybe have better outcomes than those in the UAE group. And HIFO may be a uh, priority option for the early management of CSP. And then uh, we are also concerned about the follow-up and the fertility outcomes after the half treatment of CSP. So I will show you some results. So for the follow-up, I have mentioned before, we especially need to follow up some special index when I uh, do the literature review from all these uh, literatures, um, I find that the average time for the serum beta HCG return back to normal is between uh, 28 to 54 days. And the average time duration of the vaginal bleeding after DNC is around five to seven days. And the average time for menstruation return to normal is about 27 to 39 days. And uh, at last, the average time for gestational sac disappear is about four to eight weeks. So this is from the literature review. And then I will show some typical cases that uh, my cases. So the first case is the endogenic type CSP. The 31 years old lady had a uh, para one with a uh, cesarean section. Her pre half treatment beta HCG level is nearly 30,000 unit. And here is her ultrasound and the MRI images before half treatment. And here is the real time ultrasound during our treatment. So pre half treatment, we can see the uh, gestational sac very clearly. And here is the implantation area. And intra, uh, during the half treatment, we can see the skill change is induced. And after the treatment, the whole area has uh, this skill change. And uh, immediately after the treatment, when we do the contrast uh, ultrasound, we can see that here has a non-perfused area in this uh, implantation myometrium. And uh, we, uh, we do this patient uh, for 200 sonication time and within half an hour. So uh, four days later, we do the DNC for her and uh, we monitored her or followed up her for the beta HCG for se uh, several weeks. And we can see here the beta HCG level is decreased sharply. And when um, the time go to 52 days after DNC is almost uh, the normal. And uh, this lady, um, I need to mention that uh, eight months later, she had uh, another pregnancy, which is the intrauterine pregnancy. 
So the CRIS-2 is another uh, endogenic type CSP, and uh, she has PARA-3, and all these three babies are the cesarean section. And, uh, and, she, and this um, patient, she has the gestational sac implanted and the myometrin thickness is, is no more than three millimeters. And we can see pre have treatment. Here is the gestational sac. And after the treatment, we can see the skill change. And we also do the um, DNC um, four days after the half treatment. And five days after the DNC, the beta HCG decreased uh, dramatically. And then we discharged her from the hospital. Uh, when we followed her up in the outpatient, uh, we can see that 22 days after the high flow and DNC treatment, the lady's uh, uterine, uh, the uterus is uh, becomes too normal, and uh, here is nothing in the uh, implantation area. So the third case is uh, a, a mass type CSP, and uh, this uh, young lady has one paraton and with cesarean infection, and uh, she had a um, menorrhea for eighty one days. And she have had done the abortion in the clinic. And before her go to, uh, which is uh, one month before her go to our hospital. And after the abortion, she complained about the persistent mild vaginal bleeding. And uh, the beta HCG is not so high, but when we do the ultrasound and the uh, contrast MRI for her, we can see that here is a mass in the scar area. And we can see from the T2 series, the signal is hysterogeneous. So because this uh, patient want to keep, to keep her uterus and to keep the fertility and uh, we choose HIFU for her. And uh, we do the HIFU and after the HIFU because the HCG is not so high, we decided not to do the DNC for her and only do the strict follow up and we follow up her by the ultrasound for six months. And we can see that after six months, her uterus come back to normal. So this is uh, our uh, three typical cases. And uh, um, we also concern about the fertility outcome. And this is one of my paper published in the International Journal of Hyperthermia. And uh, I, uh, our team uh, retrospectively reviewed uh, our treatment, uh, the half treatment and the DNC for the cesarean scar pregnancy. And we found that uh, in the 154 um, patients, there are 28 patients has the reproductive requirement. And uh, when we follow up them for more than, maybe more than five years and um, um, we found that here are 23 pregnancy, and in this 23 pregnancy, here are 18 intrauterine pregnancy, and uh, here are three tubal pregnancy and uh, two recurrent uh, cesarean scar pregnancy, and uh, all of them have due the laparoscopic excision of the lesion in the first uh, trimester. And uh, we also followed up this uh, intrauterine pregnancy and uh, we found that here has 12 patients had the full-term birth. And uh, for this uh, 12 patient, we can see that the average interval between the conception and the half treatment is 18 months. And all the patient had the full-term gestational age. And uh, all the baby born with the normal weight and uh, uh, all of them are healthy. And uh, here is another study conducted by our other, uh, another team with a larger group of the CSP patient. They reviewed the patient, the CSP patient treated by high or the uterine, the, uh, uterine artery embolization. And they found that uh, here are 131 attempt to conceive. And uh, in this group of patient, uh, 70, 70 patients had the intrauterine pregnancy, and uh, here are 475 patients without a fertility requirement, but eight has the undesired intrauterine pregnancy. 
and then they analyzed the, the fertile group and uh, the, the infertile group and the pregnancy group. They uh, do the relative analyze and they found that the risk factors for the infertility is that the age is more than 35 years old and the beta HCG is no more than 5,000 units and the uh, middle time is more than 56 days. And they also has done the relative analysis for the risk factors for recurrent uh, CSP. They found that uh, first is the patient treated by UAE and uh, the numbers of abortion is more than four times and uh, the patient being uh, symptomatic. So they conclude that HIFU seems superior to UAE in reducing the risk of recurrent CSP. So this is all my talk and uh, before my finish and uh, I will do some summary. So first, uh, the advantages of combined therapy of HIFU and DNC for CSP. First is that the non-invasive characteristics and real-time monitoring of HIFU and, uh, and this therapy can reduce the risk of vaginal massive bleeding and also can minimize the damage to the uterine and keep the integrity of uterus and also to keep the fertility because the systemic scar pregnancy patient usually are very young and uh, many of them has the desire to keep their fertility. And uh, for the prospective, so we need to know that there are still some, uh, a lot of part for the development and the research for the health treatment for CSP. First, uh, we need to standardize the protocol of high food, uh, including the patient selection, a clinical dosimetry and the termination criteria, et cetera. So for the patient selection, I have mentioned before that uh, we recommend to uh, do the high treatment for the endogenic um, cesarean scar pregnancy. But I find uh, the publication this year that this, uh, this group, they did high full treatment and uh, DNC in the suction carriage for the exogenic cesarean scar pregnancy. And they also report a high, a high success uh, rate uh, as high as more than 90%. So I think this kind of um, cesarean scar pregnancy maybe need more researches to do, to see whether they are suitable for the high treatment. And the second is that we need to do some uh, prospective researches of the effectiveness and the safety for the half treatment for, of CSP. And also we need to optimize the post uh, cesarean scar pregnancy and uh, to need to do some guidelines for the patient to do the following pregnancy. So this is all my topic. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Zhang uh, Jiao I'm going to you the bottom. You can ask me Okay. Oh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Uh, no wonder that Dr. Zhang is the hype mentor and tutor and uh, set up a lot of the hype center uh, all over the world. Uh, I am very amazed. Uh, if I am free, I will go to Chongqing because I love Chongqing city, maybe be your fellow. Okay, is there, uh, is there any question? Actually, we have a lot of the question uh, showing the table. Okay. Uh, I think, okay, maybe Dr. Zhang, uh, yes. someone asked that, uh, if the high food work, uh, why do you need to need to DNC again? Mm, okay, so I I think in my opinion, I think half is like a um, pre pre treatment for the DNC because we know mm -hmm. that for the CSP, if we do the uh, do the single DNC, 
that has the very high risk of the heavy bleeding and the risk of the uterine rupture. But uh, as we said in my lecture is that uh, when we do the high population of the implantation area, we can ablate uh, the nutrition the vessel because we know that in that area, the blood supply is very high. And if we destroy the vessel there, and then after that, uh, we take, move the gestational sac out by DNC and in that procedure, so the um, risk of the heavy bleeding should be uh, decreased, dramatically decreased. Because in my experience, if we do the half treatment before and then we do the DNC, the bleeding is no more than, usually it's 10 to 20 millimeter, no more than 50 millimeters. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any chance he can, the, um, he can go up the, the the gestational mass go up uh, is there is there any chance and if you have already ablated the implantation area and you can do the maybe the contrast ultrasound to emphasize or to make sure that this area is already ablated um it's rare the, the risk is rare Uh, actually, you have mentioned now after high Fu for CSP, the recurrent rate is the 23 over 131. Actually, it is almost 18%. So the recurrent rate is a little high. Uh, it, 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 do you any about this data? Tell. Um, so for this data, I haven't seen before, but I only um, through my literature review. Um, so yes, uh, after, um, so for the patient to have the system scar pregnancy before, no matter what kind of method she have done, if she want to keep her uterus, so she um, have the chance, no matter what kind of the method have done, she has a chance to have a recurrent uh, Cesarean scar pregnancy. But uh, when we compared the high food uh, with the uh, uterine artery uh, embolization, the rate uh, is uh, lower than the uterine artery embolization. And uh, also, I think the um, doctors have mentioned before that uh, if the patient has the desire to have another baby, so the UAE is, is not uh, recommended for her. But uh, high food can be another choice for her. Thank you. Is there any question? So, okay. may I? Uh, may I have? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for your beautiful presentation. And it was really eye opening. And uh, I have one question and one comment. Uh, question is uh, prot as for protocol. High treatment uh, may decrease the region and uh, maybe itself decrease HCG. And you, your protocol, two days or three days after high you do surgery, DNC. But I, I wonder, uh, maybe one week later, it may be more easier. How, uh, how do you think of it? How, why do you decide two days after three days after high food? Okay, thank you, Professor Tsutsumi. So uh, this protocol is uh, all by our team, especially under the leading of Professor Zhang Lian. So um, because after the high treatment, uh, we know that uh, we have the uh, heat, uh, heat effect of the implantation area mm -hmm. and uh, there has some uh, um, the edema, edema in that area. So the edema will be disappear within the, uh, 72 hours. So we recommend that in this 72 hours, we do not do any uh, transvaginal um, procedures for the patient to wait this edema to be disappeared or to be uh, eased. Okay. Uh, uh, one comment. 
And if you have five, you don't have to do uh, uterine artery embolism UAE and because UAE may damage uterine function and also ovarian function. Mm -hmm. So HIFU is much, much better than UAE, it's my opinion. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Tutumi. Yes, is also what I'm thinking about is the HIFU, especially for the keep the function of uterine or the ovary function is better than UAE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. Tsuchumi, and uh, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Uh, because the time is limited, I am I know there's a lot of questions and the need, Dr. Zhang, come back. Maybe you can go to Chongqing and visit to the Dr. Zhang and the face to face to ask the list question. The wonderful session, and no wonder Dr. Zhang is uh, the high maintenance. So I need a close session and.